They are the mugshots of the son and dad just arrested in connection with the cold case of missing college student Kristen Smart. And now police are giving special thanks to this man, Chris Lambert, whose podcast is credited with cracking the baffling 25-year-old case wide open. Kristen Smart, a 19-year-old Californian, was a fresh and vibrant young woman. She loved swimming and skiing, much like the rest of her family, and was an enthusiastic athlete. But like most freshmen, she struggled more with college life. Yet, she somehow managed to unweave the struggles and live the bit of fun she could have. Everything was typical. What then unexpectedly happened on May 24, 1996, that turned her life upside down and robbed her of everything? How in 2021, some 25 years later, was her case ultimately resolved? And how did Chris Lambert, the podcaster from your own backyard, manage to piece everything together? Welcome to Bizarre Cases, I'm Joel, and today we're exploring the Kristen Smart case and how the mystery behind her murder was solved 25 years later. Without any further ado, let's walk out onto the edge of the unknown. California is renowned for its expansive, bountiful terrain, healthy forests, and advancing technologies. The same California, however, was left in a state of shock in 1996 when it came face to face with the brutal and murder of an innocent 19-year-old. Kristen Smart, then 19 years old, vanished in thin air over Memorial Day weekend in 1996. Her family, friends and supporters kept looking for closure and justice for decades afterwards. However, to their rescue came the soft-spoken Chris Lambert 25 years later, who very carefully examined the case and helped it have its long-awaited closure. When Kristen Smart disappeared while returning from a college party in San Luis Obispo, California, Chris was just 8 years old. However, years later, when he was unable to locate any fresh articles regarding the case, he made the decision to take action. Lambert always wondered what had happened to the girl as he drove by the billboard. He carried on with his life, enrolling at a community college and beginning his musical career. However, he thought back to that old advertisement in May of 2018 and pondered what had transpired. He typed, Kristen Smart. He selected the Los Angeles Times article, A Cold Case, a haunting mystery from the year 2006. It took a while. Over the period of two days, he repeatedly went back to the tab and left it open. He looked around for an update or a documentary on Kristen after reading the final paragraph describing the most recent unsuccessful hunt for her body. His mind suddenly had the insane idea. What if I made a documentary? He had no formal experience, had never produced a documentary, and had no idea where to even begin. But he sent a link to the LA Times article to his girlfriend and wrote, I'm going to solve this case. The next day, she emailed Lambert. I can't believe I didn't tell you. I went to school with the guy who walked her home that night. I went to school with him. Lambert asked what she remembered about him. We all called him Scary Paul. And that was like, boom, Lambert remembers. That was really the moment it went from being an idea in a notebook to being like, wow, there's some actual legs here, and I have an in. Lambert spoke with his acquaintance, who also connected him with others who knew Flores, the man suspected in Kristen's disappearance. Then, on a cloudy day in February 2019, he attended a beach memorial being held by some of Kristen's friends to honor what would have been her 42nd birthday. That same day, he hit publish on a YouTube teaser for Your Own Backyard, his new podcast about the disappearance of Kristen Smart. Lambert remained and sat in his car for a long while as it started to rain and most people dispersed to go home. He headed out to the beach with his recording equipment once the storm had subsided in order to record some field recordings of the rain and ocean. A balloon was carried up by someone. He recognized her as Kristen Smart's mother, Denise Smart. They conversed after Lambert made an introduction. Lambert kept in touch with the Smart family continuously after that. Denise attributes Lambert's storytelling approach with aiding in repositioning the narrative of her daughter and reigniting interest in the case. 
Lambert's podcast attracted millions of listeners and reignited curiosity about this long unsolved case. What happened next is history, but before that, let's dig into the history of the Christian Smart case. When Christian Smart graduated from California Polytechnic State University or Cal Poly in May 1996, she had only finished her first year. According to Lindsay, Christian's younger sister, their mother pushed her to go there. She grew up with Lindsay and their brother Matt in Stockton, California, which was barely 250 miles away. Denise and Stan, her parents, who are also educators, supported their children's interests. That ended up becoming college. Kristen had trouble setting in and, just like many other freshmen, she missed her family. On the other hand, every Sunday when she called her parents, they urged her to go on. On Friday, May 24, 1996, the Memorial Day weekend officially began. The majority of the students had left campus, but Kristen remained. Margarita Campos, who resided in the Muir Hall room next door, had done the same. Despite their disagreements, they had developed a close friendship. Kristen was eager to attend the party when they were invited that Friday night. The two young ladies strolled to a neighborhood off campus with fraternities, sororities, and student housing. The situation had reached its limits for Margarita. They got to the parking lot of an apartment complex. Kristen was missing her keys, pocketbook, cash, and identification. Margarita handed over her keys to re-enter Muir Hall before leaving. The next morning, Margarita waited to hear from Kristen. She didn't notice Kristen hadn't come home until her roommate came back to the dorm room. All of Kristen's personal items, including her pocketbook, money, and identification, were there in the space precisely as she had left them. Kristen had been absent for more than 48 hours when they made the university police at Cal Poly aware of her disappearance. Margarita claims nonetheless that the police did not appear worried. Denise Smart, Kristen's mother, had taken her two younger children to a swim meet during Memorial Day weekend. On that Sunday, she eagerly anticipated hearing from Kristen, but the phone call never came. Instead, according to Denise Pierce, on May 27th, Cal Poly Campus Police contacted the Smarts and inquired as to whether Kristen was present. The Smarts say they sought to file a missing persons report with the local police, but were informed it was too early and the FBI told them Cal Poly police were in charge. But as Chris Lambert learned, campus police did not act straight away. Kristen had been missing for four days when the Cal Poly police started their investigation. She had wound up at a party at a residence off campus as they quickly discovered. Chris Lambert, a consultant for CBS News, put together what he discovered from persons who were present that evening. Whether under the influence of drugs or just because of a lot of alcohol, Kristen became extremely drunk. She eventually collapsed on the lawn next door. According to Lambert, Kristen was unable to stand by herself, so fellow partygoer Cheryl Anderson started assisting her back to school. Paul Flores, another partygoer, soon joined them. Cheryl claims Flores tried to hug and kiss her as they got to the exit for her hostel. Only after he agreed to drive Kristen back to her dorm did she depart from them. Whatever transpired in those early hours, Kristen Smart has never been heard from again. Campus police made a number of errors that seemed to hinder the investigation from the start, starting with the notion that Kristen was out having fun while disregarding concerned friends who reported her missing. Furthermore, they took six days before conducting a formal interview with Paul Flores, even worse, his dorm room was never sealed. Kristen had been gone for 16 days by the time they had examined Flores' room. Campus cops discovered an unoccupied room that had been sterilized by the university's cleaning staff after classes were over. Any possible evidence had long since vanished. The San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office dispatched numerous canines trained to locate human remains to the Cal Poly dorms just days after taking over the investigation. Up until the dog entered Paul Flores' room, there was silence. Keep in mind that Flores' room had been fully cleaned and empty. Amazingly, however, the same thing transpired with three additional canines. 
Despite the fact that Flores had been under suspicion nearly from the start, all chances of an arrest were crushed in May 1997 when then-Sheriff Ed Williams admitted to the San Luis Obispo Telegraph, Paul Flores must explain what happened to Christian Smart to us, so I don't see us finishing this case without Mr. Flores providing something. When Christian Smart disappeared, Paul Flores' parents, Susan and Reuben, were separated and living apart. Four months later, while attempting to reconcile, Susan rented out her house in Arroyo Grande. Podcast Episode 3 Something shiny catches her eye next to the front driver's side tire, a single woman's earring. It was turned over to a detective with the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office, but the smarts never knew it existed until the Lassiters were deposed in January 1997. Sheriff Ian Parkinson of San Luis Obispo County was sworn into office in 2011. He assured the smarts that cracking the case of Christian would be his first priority. The department has carried out 23 search warrants, 96 different interviews, and gathered 258 extra pieces of evidence since Parkinson took over. Although Christian's body has not been located, Paul and Rubin were detained and prosecuted in April 2021 after authorities said that they had damning evidence that a body had been buried in that site and then recently transported, according to a county probation report seen by the San Luis Obispo Tribune. In documents filed in the case, a sheriff's office detective stated investigators are in possession of biological evidence that make them believe the victim was buried underneath the defendant's Reuben Floor's deck at one time. Prosecutors believe the father and son moved the body to another location before authorities searched the property. For crimes that happen in a bedroom, there are no witnesses, but ground-penetrating radar a forensic archaeologist and a lab supervisor tell us what Christian could not. We don't have a full intact body in this case, but we have her blood. Pervrell told the jury in his October 4th closing argument, a couple grains of bloody sand, that's all the smart family has left of their daughter. He called the journey to the trials a long, overwhelming and emotional one and spoke directly to his daughter. Christian Smart's father, Stan Smart, made a statement on behalf of the family in the wake of the guilty verdict. Without Christian, there is no joy or happiness with this verdict. To our Christian, almost three decades ago, our lives were irreparably changed on the night you disappeared, he said. Know that your spirit lives on in each and every one of us. Not a single day goes by that you aren't missed, remembered, loved and celebrated, he continued. Christian Smart's mother, brother and sister were also present at the press conference. On April 13, 2021, Paul Flores was taken into custody at his Los Angeles residence and charged with murder during a rape or attempted rape. Following a three-month trial, a jury found him guilty of killing Christian Smart. He will now face a sentence of 25 years to life in prison at the age of 45. Meanwhile, Reuben Flores was found not guilty of helping to hide the body. However, wouldn't this have been less agonizing for the Smart family if the case was paid more attention to earlier on? Wouldn't it have been more pacifying to have had justice sooner? Do you also think that Christian got justice too late? What do you believe Paul deserved in return for his horrifying crime? Please share with us in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on our content. Catch you in the next video.